up that you'd like to see the um, color chart of the artist that will be the next day, which is Friday. Um, that's going to be Melind Maluk. And so I brought Melind's um, dot card with me. So I'm going to show that to you and we'll go over his colors. And then with time remaining, I'm going to um, go over the um, the pan set, the 24 pan set with you. So why don't we go ahead and start? I'm going to turn on Facebook. Uh, do that real quick. In the link, we'll look. And okay. And turn on chat so I can see chat on this side too. All right. So I'm going to put this down. No, it's a little hard to read. I'm going to read it to you anyway. We're going to look at each one of them. So they just look like dark, dark dots, but we're going to paint each one out. I brought each one of the tubes, so we'll paint them out. But this is going to be the artist tomorrow is Malin. Malik. So I'm going to read it to you because I know you can't read upside down. I have a copy. So um, Malin is an internationally recognized popular Indian artist who's been working consistently for over 35 years. His writing spans 12 books on art instruction, five on watercolor alone, the first of which was published in 2000 and sold over 100,000 articles. 100,000 articles. Um, he's been in French and English magazines. He's an international artist and has written for the Artist Magazine and Watercolor Magic. He teaches regular workshops and watercolor courses in India and has taught over 10,000 students. So far, so easily, one can call him the Indian ambassador of watercolor. He's also taught workshops in Europe, France, Spain, Sweden, Italy, Russia, um, Singapore, Dubai, Thailand, Sweden, France, and Russia. Um, his paintings have been selected for many watercolor society exhibitions, including AWS, uh, for three consecutive years. So he'll be the artist tomorrow. I will go ahead and post his In the Artist Studio tonight so you can watch it. And that way you can ask him any questions. He's um, uh, great at answering questions, has a, a great knowledge of watercolor. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Mark. Hello, Barbara. Stella, how are you? Rick. So on the Facebook side, on the Zoom side, you can um, un, un, um, do your mute button and you can talk if you want to ask questions. So now I'm going to show you. He has 19 colors. Melind also has a watercolor set. So I don't know which ones he's going to be showing tomorrow. So I'm going to show you the 19 colors. And then he's not, uh, he can do any colors, any of the 260. But I'm going to show you his dot card, except for three colors I can't find. They're somewhere in my desk somewhere. OK, so why don't we go ahead and start. So many of these colors you've seen before, and tomorrow you'll see them in action with me. Hello, Raffaele. Let's 
So I'm just taking them out right now. Caroline. Caroline says she's in lockdown in Australia. We're not locked down in, um, in Washington. We just have to have masks inside and outside and be six feet apart. Okay. So one of his first, one of his colors, one of his 19 colors is lavender. And if you've looked on Facebook, he does beautiful artwork. Lavender. Hello, George. Hello, Narita. And he's going to use, or he uses on his dark card. This is permanent alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is one of the two fugitive colors we have. This is permanent alizarin crimson. Hello, Pasqualino. I hope to see you in Italy next year. This is undersea green. Permanent green light. So this is thalo. So we're split, we're split if it's a thalo, it's going to be very it's like, welcome to the party. So this is thalo green, and this is the yellow shade of thalo green. the yellow shade of phthalo green. It's uh, so Stella's asking that permanent lizard creams, permanent lizard crimson um, on the screen looks too red. I know it's dark or it's just my screen. It's the screen. So here in front of me, it's much lighter than it is on the screen. These are just, it's, well, it's the same on my screen, probably the same as on your screen. It's much darker on the screen that here is in front of me. The um, permanent green light is much more vibrant than it is on my screen. So some of you that have screens that can color adjust, um, you might be seeing it more as the, as the real color than, than here in front of me or what I'm seeing on the screen. This is Moon Glow. It 
So we can see right away, we can see the granulation, you can see the granulation right away inside of Moon Glow. So Moon Glow is the, has the antiquated red, the viridian, and the ultramarine blue. Um, Lynn also uses the shadow of violet, which I don't have with me today. It'd be the same thing. It'd be the ultramarine, the viridian, and it would be the pyro orange. So we'd have an orange tint versus a red tint. This is cobalt blue. So the permanent lizard crimson is made with um, non-fugitive pigment. So it's a combination of uh, pigment. So the permanent lizard crimson has anthraquinide red, which is a permanent, quinacridone red, permanent, pyroline scarlet, which is a permanent. So it has PR-177, PV-19, and PR-149. And the alizarin crimson is just has that pigment alizarin crimson, which is pigment red number 83. And we did that because while the alizarin crimson was made by, it's a coal tar derivative, and it's one that's highly used by the masters, used very much by the masters. A lot of professors want their students to use it. We also made one for artists that want the beauty of the alizarin crimson, but in a permanent, um, format. So that's why we have the permanent lizard crimson. So Pascalino, we're also broadcasting on Zoom simultaneously. And if you wanted to be on Zoom, you'd see the same presentation, but you'd be able to um, speak. Um, I could hear you if you wanted that. And this is one of my favorites. I would say it's probably one of the one of the um, one of the plainest colors. Back to zoom. And it is ultramarine blue. How about the ultramarine blue? So we have the lavender. This is on uh, Malin's uh, dot card. We have the lavender. We have the permanent lizard crimson, the undersea green, the, the permanent green light. This is the phthalo green yellow shade. This is the moon glow. This is the cobalt blue. And this is the ultramarine blue. So that's his, that's a portion of his palette. Yeah, I would say Moon Glow is extremely, it's, it's very, very, very popular. So if you have questions for me, you can unmute your speaker and ask me your questions.
John, can you show us a close up of the two tubes, the ultramarine and the uh, cobalt blue? Yeah, sure. You just want to see the physical tube? Yes, please. Yeah, of course. So these are ones I travel with, so they're kind of beat up. So this is the cobalt blue, and this is the ultramarine blue. That, see that get that in focus here. For some reason, my screen, uh, the two samples you showed me look uh, similar in color. Yeah, yeah it's, um, uh, you probably have the same kind of screen that I do, but they're not. The ultramarine blue is actually much, it's, it's darker compared to the cobalt. But on, gotcha. my, on my screen- It's also are, transparent, isn't it? Uh, the ultramarine, is that what you mean? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So I can do that too on a go forward basis. What I can do is um, I will just put a, a line underneath. So you can see, I'll put a black line and that way you can see through it to see which ones are transparent or semi-transparent. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome, my pleasure. Gabriel, it looks the same color. The two, the two blues look the same color on my screen too. But I yeah. know in reality, because I use both of them a lot, that uh, the uh, ultramarine's darker. Yeah, I think it's, it's if there's two issues, I think. One is our screens, um, and, and probably a little bit less our screens than it is the camera. I know for Zoom and for Facebook, um, they, cut, they cut me out anyway of um, HD because it takes so much um, bandwidth. And when you cut the bandwidth down, you also cut down what you can see. So even if our, our, our monitors were, um, we had spiders on them to do color correction, it's also a matter of bandwidth. It's really kind of the, the, the issue of why we have the dot cards. I mean, it's why we have a dot card for Milan. It's why we have the 238. Nothing really beats, um, I think for an artist, to, to wet that color dot out and see the color and also to be able to play with it with your brush. I mean, both those, because I think as artists, not only are you very visual, you're very tactile and uh, nothing beats that. I think this kind, I of wet, agree. this kind of wets the appetite, um, but to take it to the next level is really kind of the dot card. Yeah, so my, the two colors I have right now is the cobalt blue, but French ultramarine, and you can see there is a, a bit of a difference between the two on, on my chart. And I see on my screen looking at them right now, they, they look almost the same. They do? Oh, that's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. It's that, I need it's some that, better band. It's that camera monitor thing. Yeah. So the French, you know, it, it's the French is the same as the ultramarine. They're both the same. They're both PB29, pigment blue number 29. And it's just the particle size difference. The French particle is larger, the ultramarine is smaller. So when light hits the larger, it moves toward the red or the warm. And when light hits the smaller, it moves toward the cool or the green. So that's kind of, if you, if you didn't know it, that's kind of why you're picking it out. Your, your eyes kind of embracing that, um, but, but they're both cool. I mean, they're, they're, I would say they're core colors for, for most artists, they're core colors. Sorry, I'm going to be the end of September. Oh my gosh. Crazy year.
So this is another phthalo. And so phthalos, we expect those to be pretty intense colors. Kind of like blue red. Kind of like loud guests at your party. So this is the green shade. They will do green shade. This is the burnt sienna. I like the siennas and the ochres, the earth colors. So that's burnt sienna. One thing I was I was always um, taking it back a little bit when I did the in the artist studios is that um, it's how the artist would use colors. There's Albaro, for example, taking it back, a surprised, enlightened, I guess. Um, Albaro uses for the most part colors that um, are found in the city. He doesn't use a lot of bright colors because he doesn't see those um, when he's looking at um, cityscapes, etc. And then there's Malin, and you'll see a lot of Malin's work has a lot of color in it. So it's, it's really interesting to see through the artist's eyes of what they see in the world that surrounds them. Um, there's artists that use only blacks, for example, and what they can do with the blacks just, it's amazing. So you amaze me at what you can do. It's, it's really quite beautiful. So this is ivory black. And ivory black What's different about ivory black? Don't know. Transparent? Uh, you can look at it here. Let's see if I can certainly see it as it dries. But we'll see pretty, pretty quickly, certainly as it dries, somewhat like hematite in, in a way. We will see here on the edges um, a slight yellowish. So the ivory black is a warm black. So that's what makes it makes it different, for example, than a lamp black. Lamp black is the blackest black. For us, it's the blackest black. Um, ivory is going to be a warm black because it's going to have that, that yellow tintish to it when you look on the outside edge. See what happens when I use a phthalo? Come on, focus. Ah, that phthalo, boy, it's just, it's just a, such a strong color. This is here's a yellow light. And I'm gonna do that again. Something like that. As I put a third color, it's going to go back into focus. It's just trying to, it's trying to balance on that, on all this white for whatever reason. We put another color in the middle. So this, yeah. What color do you think that is? Center three. This right here, it's a very bright color. So indithrin would be more of a blue. 
this right here is a pyrrole. So it's a pyrrole scarlet. Pyrroles are very vibrant, very, very vibrant colors. Perylene's almost as much so, but I would, I would say uh, pyrrole first, then followed by the perylene family. And I just did this because my brush was, um, still had some of the phthalo and those phthalos, but they're just, they're strong. And this is a clean brush of the Hansa. And then this one, this is the hands of yellow, dark, which is, so the colors I'm putting down, if you just tuned in, and um, these are part of, these are Malin's dot card. So he may or may not be going over these colors tomorrow, um, but one of you had asked if I would show the artist's dark card um, for each of the upcoming artists, which, I'm certainly very, very happy to do so. Um, and that's Hansi Yellow, Hansi Yellow Deep. Hansi Yellow Deep from a stick. Let's see, Carl, up here. So one of those other colors, it's quinacridone, quinacridone deep gold, and also quinacridone gold. So let me show you those kind of um, side by side, what those look like. This is the quinacridone deep gold. Deep gold. Now I'll show you quinacridone gold. Quinacridone gold, quinacridone deep gold. I think I might have been in the way from this speaker. I think, let's see. I think Malin using the color is going to be pretty fantastic. His, his, uh, his paintings are beautiful. So I was missing three of his colors on um, the shadow violet. The transparent brown oxide, which is a really uh, awesome color. It's kind of somewhat in, 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 in this range. And then the uh, manganese blue hue. I could be using my retains here. But this is, these are the colors I'm going to be using.
Well, these are the colors on this dark card. Now. He may or may not be using this tomorrow, but it'll give you kind of a insight on the colors that he does use. John, I have a question. Yes. You said that on the dot card, there were two colors that you couldn't find. Can you tell yes. us what those are? There was three colors. The first one I couldn't find in, in my tubes. I've got like 400 of them behind me was the manganese blue U. So manganese okay. blue U. Uh, the transparent brown oxide. Okay. And the shadow violet. So I, I love that shadow violet. I used it first just last week in the ha half pans. And um, while I was using it, I ordered <laughs> the tube. It's a wonderful color for a landscape. You know, we, we call that, Barbara, we call our, our happy mistake. Because <laughs> probably a decade and a half ago, one of the batch makers was making a batch and used the pyrrole orange and not the anthracoid red. And because all the steps are QC'd by the chemist as they happen, the chemist put it on hold. He saw it on the mill, went to check and says, okay, that one has to be on hold. My chemist, Ron. And then it took him about a day to say, I really like that. I like that a lot. And so we brought it out as a color. So what I can do, here, let me show it to you. I do, have it on, I do have it on the dot cards. So let me find that real quick. Um, manganese blue U. I don't know where my dot cards are. So here's the, get it out. That up. That's the manganese. That's the manganese blue U. And the other one was the shadow violet. So the shadow violet is, is going to be the ultramarine blue. It's going to be the viridian, and it's going to be the um, power orange. This writing is is small. And the third one was the transparent brown oxide. That should be on this sheet right here. Transparent yellow oxide. It's um, a pretty color. Transparent brown oxide. Here we go, transparent brown oxide. So transparent brown oxide. These are really I'm using a Kalinsky and it just, it just sucks up the water. It just wants to just suck it up. There we go. Mm -hmm. Transparent brown oxide. We also have the environmental friendly. And, and then his other color, let me see if I find the shadow violet for you. If I move the oil, it's the right next to the moon. You know, sometimes I'm looking right at them and I can't see them.
Well, I'm going to have to pass that one because I know it's here and I can't see it. What I also did is I brought uh, the ultimate um, pan set, or the 24 pan set. So let me show that to you because. John, the shadow violet is on this right uh, below the moon glow, left side. Left side, left side. Do you have a picture of yours, Barbara? So it has the blue. It's above Shudjalite. Shudjalite, yeah. And below me, uh, below me, moon glow. It is great having somebody else have the dot cards. Thank you. So I love right these dot cards. You see, <laughs> I got them all marked up. Try not to have my, my brush suck in the. It just wants to suck it all back into the brush. There's kind of the, the shadow violet. So you can see the, the moon glow has more of, it has a red, whereas the shadow violet has gonna have the orange. But they're both transparent, so they're really versatile. Have you used them? So you, did you use the shadow violet yesterday? I used it last week. Let me show you. All of this is shadow violet. Oh, very cool. Very with cool. um, red oxide, another one of my new favorites, and the lunar red rock. Awesome. So lots of lots of granulation. Yes. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna put my lens to the side, and I'm gonna show you the. So the 24 comes like this. Let me put this stuff up. Comes in a box like this. And in the box, there's a bonus pan set. So it's it's has 24 empty pans like that. So you can put your own colors inside of it. Yeah. Can we buy those uh, empty boxes uh, separately? Because I have a bunch of the like 12 pan things and it was, you know, I had all these little boxes. And at one point I was painting in the car in the back seat. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> they were going all over the place. I don't, I don't, I don't believe they're selling these as. So you mean the pans are going everywhere? Because you want well, to because they're they're boxes of twelve, and um, they're just kind of you know you need kind of a flat surface to hold them. But anyway, I'll keep looking. Mm -hmm. You don't have uh, plastic ones either. I don't think. I'll keep hunting. All right. And so this is the 24. That's what 24 looks like. Comes with uh, acetate so you can, you know, know what colors. Acetate. Wonderful. So buff and buff and hands and hands up. Um, I get asked quite a bit or I see comments of, well, they're not all to the top. Um, when we fill them, they're at the top. We fill them sometimes three to four times because what we're trying to do is take out all the water. Um, you don't want to pay for water with a pan. You want to pay for paint. And some of them will come out and it just depends on the surface tension. If the surface tension of the plastic is higher, um, it can't come out. One drop of water, the first time you put paint on water on that, it's going to seal it. Um, if the surface tension is lower, it's not going to come out. And it's really, it's, it's, it has everything to do with the pigment. Um, that's, that's an easy one. 
So let me show you some of the half hands. It was interesting when we, when we, were, when we were going to bring out watercolors um, to the, to, to outside the US, for example, into Europe. Um, it was the pans and it was five mils. And we didn't have pans or five mils, we had 15 mils. And the 15 mils have done very, very well in Europe. And we thought, okay, so now we're gonna come around full, si full circle and bring out the pans. Because they are still really good for traveling. Um, so let's look at some, I'm gonna, I have fat fingers. So what I end up doing is putting one color into the other color. So I'm gonna take one out. Um, this is going to be hands of yellow deep, hands of yellow deep. John, uh, how did you go about picking out those particular 24 colors for this? You know, we, we have, we have um, quite a few, we have brand ambassadors, so we will ask them. Um, we have quite a few artists that have had years and years of uh, painting, and we said, what's, what's, what are the practical colors? I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out eight. You know, there's going to be a yellow, there's going to be an ultra, there's going to be a red, but past that, it's what, what's useful. Um, it's also why we have open stock, because why we take the best stab at it, it's, it's, it's always good to have the ability for the artist to pick out the colors they want. You know, it could be you want one, it could be you want four. Um, these we believe give from the artist in, uh, feedback we've had gives the broadest usage. But we also have six color ones, etc. So, no, I was actually super impressed to see uh, the colors that were chosen for this palette. You know, I fall in love with colors because of color. So I, there, I have to also go and talk to the practical side, which is the artist, and say, okay. Well I, well, I really love all the colors. Which, which colors would you choose that would have um, the most ability for someone choosing the 24 or the 12? So this is gonna be the hands of yellow deep. Thank you, Gabriel. So it's gonna be the hands of yellow deep. And they went out, they went out super easy. Really, really, really easy. And I've seen artists use handsets um, in plein air, uh, in the airports. You could do very similar, very similar things with the sticks. It's just a different, it's just a different way of, of having the, the color. Um, this is permanent alizarin crimson. It's permanent alizarin crimson. Could you tell us the size number that's on that brush? Yeah, this is a um, uh, Da Vinci. Uh, is it Da Vinci? Yes, it's a Da Vinci. It's I'm a, reading uh, it upside down. Casaneo. I'm just wondering the numbers. Oh, it's a twelve. It's 12. a twelve. Nice. Yeah. I do have it. I do have it in 10 and 8 as well. So this is a this is a 10. I can show you what a 10 looks like. Alexa off. So that's, that's a 10, that's a 12. I kind of like the 12 better, it's bigger for me anyway. I thought the 12 was great. So this is gonna be an ultramarine blue. Let me show you how that right. Have you tried the, tried the half pins?
So Nancy says she really loves the colors and the palette. Um, so Judy, Judy says hot glue the pants. With just one drop of water, it's going to be, I'll show you. It's, uh, which one came down? Let's see here. So this is buff titanium. So I'll take you back in. See, I touch it with my dirty hands. So it just takes, you just have to wet it. And once you re-wet the gum Arabic, it'll stick. And you'll naturally do that with your brush. When you touch your brush with water the first time, just by touching with water, it's going to go to the sides when it dries, it's going to just hold on. So let's see, ultramarine. Ultramarine. You can make your own pans. You can uh, squeeze from a tube into the pan. It's not going to be, um, it'll never be as con condensed as these are. Um, but the, from the tube, they will dry and you can re wet them. The gum Arabic allows you to re wet. Uh, but these have very little moisture and huge amounts of pigment. So Raffaele says you can paint any kind of subjects with this selection. So Indian art, this one's Indian art, let's see. You don't have to take them out like I'm doing. In fact, this is the last one I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna paint the rest right inside the box. It's, I tend to go over the line. No, I go over the line. So this should be Indian red. So raw sienna light, raw sienna light's a color that uh, Alexa off. Nancy says this was her very first purchase. This palette is my very first Daniel Smith purchase. Are you liking it, Nancy? To show you this set, I had to go to manufacturing and take each one of the colors out. So I didn't quite put the, the other 12 into order. It should be. So 
and I said, yes, I love them. Awesome. And there's, there's several sets. Um, there's, there's the blues, which are just have blues. There's the greens. So I'm going to post, um, um, I've asked that the Malin um, in the artist studio be posted. It'll probably be posted in about um, three hours if you want to if you want to watch it before you talk to see Malin, or you can see it like an hour before his presentation. It's going to be on Facebook. Um, it's probably about thirty to forty minutes long. I know Malin is in lockdown. He's in India, so they're in lockdown right now. They've been in lockdown in and out of lockdown. super versatile. Um, this is the James Gray. What's the backstory on that gray? Um, so Jane is from Australia and she's a colorist. She's very, very knowledgeable about pigments and kind of answering, I think one of your questions, Gabriel, um, we had talked to um, Jane, Jane Blundell, um, and we had just made grays for Alvaro. We had just made grays for Joseph. And Jane had a gray that her students loved. I said, can you help me with that? And so we went back and forth. It takes, it takes a lot to go back and forth to make sure we're meeting the expectations of the artist. And so this is her, her gray. Can you do this yourself? Yes. You know, it's really kind of a timing. Um, Alvaro uses his his own caliente. He said, you know, I can do it myself, but it's easier for me to squirt it from a tube and be instantly painting than for me to mess around and, um, and mix the color. So, James is ultramarine blue, PB29, and burnt sienna, pigment brown number seven. So it's a combination of both of those. So I'm low staining, uh, it is granulating and it's semi-transparent. You can actually see the granulation. I could see why it made the palette. It's a gorgeous color. And uh, those two colors um, people use quite a bit, ultramarine and bird sienna in their palette. Have you used the half pans, Gabriel? You know, I'm a, t I'm a, I'm a tube guy. I like, <laughs> I like fresh paint every time when I paint. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, if you want to make me a believer of the pans, um, I'm, I'll do some homework. Um, but I think also a really nice thing is you're using the Klinsky. 
I probably, if I use the pans, I would use a spray bottle. Maybe oh, when better. I first go out uh, and pull it out, plein air painting, I would use a spray bottle first to activate them. Um, and then using something like a Kalinsky or a squirrel to really get them going. But uh, so I, 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 I think it's a gorgeous palette. I had great success with the um, watercolor pens from Japan and yes. the half pans. The half pans are very interesting. Yep. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to have our footsteps. I can see you and you can see me. Let's see, put this down. I did do my homework you sent me with, John. Oh, yes? Yeah, um, I took uh, three of your colors um, that you said were non lifting. And so um, here they are. We got um, phthalo green, seems to lift all right, depending on how long it's uh, in water. Um, and then we got uh, Quinn Rose. And uh, it lifts well. So I was just curious on what basis are we saying that the pigment lifts or doesn't lift? So we have, there's, there's three categories that we use. Um, one of them we combine two into. There's, so there's three categories. There's non-staining, medium staining, and um, high staining. So the quinacridone rose is a medium staining. So what you would see with the quinacridone rose, if we hold up your painting again, you should see a, a slight tint. So if it was non-staining, when we took the brush across it, um, it should be almost white, almost white. If you can see a little bit of tint, like on the top one, now, now it's the bottom one, I can see on the screen a little bit of tint, that's medium staining. So your yellow, which was which one was your yellow? It's a Hans yellow uh, light, which is a number two. But uh, I guess uh, the phthalo green though is a number four. So phthalo four is it's it should really stain. Uh, if you just lay something down, you're going to be better at picking it up. But it's a watercolor, so you can actually wet your brush now and try to pick it up. Um, and it should, it should be even more um, adhering to your paper. The Hansi Yellow White is a low staining, so it should be the one that picks up the most. And I can see if I kind of look, it looks like the, the white of the paper is brighter on the Hansi Yellow than it is on the Thalo and it is on the Quinacridone. So that's good. Yeah, so low staining, medium staining, and high staining. You have all three. And what I'm, what I just used was a, a Vita uh, paper towel for those uh, that we have here in the States. Uh, it's a, it's a decent, it's not your most expensive paper towel, but uh, was also the lifting considered as a brush, you know, a paintbrush or a sponge. You know, paintbrush, if I was going to use a paper towel, I think that's going to pick up more than a paintbrush is going to pick up. Yes. Uh, and then, I don't know, the last one you had mentioned, I'm not quite sure, but a sponge probably would even, I think paper, paper is going to pick up. I have a phthalo here. Let's see. I should do a phthalo here. So what I did for this test was I I actually put the dab of uh, fresh paint on the paper and then I took uh, it all the way up and then I took my mop brush and got the, got the whole area nice and saturated and kind of moved it around like so. And then uh, just took that paper towel and pulled this one, waited a little bit, pulled the second one, waited a little bit longer, 
and pulled this one here. Oh, excellent. I love the experimenting. And that's Thalo right there. This one's Thalo, ultra ring Thalo. So, with the, with the brush. Sorry, I took us into overtime. No, I think that's, I mean, I think most artists will know. So you can still see it's pretty quickly, it's still stained. Longer I wait, the more it's going to the more it's going to stain. Staining is um, characteristic of the pigment. It can be um, irregular shape, or it goes under the the um, cotton and holds on. Um, it could be the size. So then we take our take our our dry. Then we try wetting it. So I I dabbed because I didn't want to ruin the integrity of the paper oh yeah so I actually yeah. just yeah. let the paper towel soak it yeah it does pretty good the question is going to be later on when it dries how much could we could we pull so yeah good job i think nothing beats testing stuff yourself you know it's that's the whole thing about watercolor. I think most because when I was, I'm 62, when I was in uh, kindergarten, we could use watercolors because they come off your hands. It's probably one of the hardest mediums there is to learn how to master because it's, it's, all, that, it's all that knowledge you have to learn. How much water do you use for a color? Um, it's just unbelievable the amount of knowledge you, you build up over the years. So tomorrow is going to be Melind. If you have questions, you know you can always email me. I I, I love questions. Um, if it's applicable to a lot of people, what I'll do is I'll mention it um, so all the viewers can hear it. So Stella says the longer it stays, the more difficult it is to lift, especially on cotton. Um, Claudia Thalo doesn't lift off 100% cotton. Um, I think that's the beauty about you know asking questions is you get a lot of a lot of people answering them in different ways. So Gabriel, thank you. Barbara, thank you for your input today. Um, tomorrow will be Melind. Um, he's a master artist, so questions you you've always wanted to ask. He's done um, uh, portraits. He does a lot of um, architectural drawings. He does. Uh, people sitting in cafes. So it runs the whole gamut and uh, very, very opened up for questions. I will have that, um, I have to find it on my home computer, um, his in the artist studio. And I will uh, see if I can get that. And if so, I will post it so you'll be able to see it before discussing with him tomorrow. With that, thank you all for joining me today. Um, you made the months just fly. Thank you. You've got great questions. Barbara, thank you for showing your artwork. Gabriel, thank you for showing your artwork. I'm always open to see your artwork. You can always interrupt and show your artwork. It's, um, it's I think I certainly want to see it. And with that, I want to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>